This is a demonstration of a chlorine dioxide drop count test kit using endpoint ID procedures. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to collect an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before collecting your sample, it's important to rinse the vial three times with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample, hold the vial close to eye level. Accuracy is very important during this step. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level to verify. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. Before adding your sample to the vial, add 10 drops of potassium iodide 10%. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. Next, add 10 drops of citric acid. Hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The next step is to choose your sample size based on your desired drop equivalency. Use the syringe to accurately measure your sample and then add the sample to the vial. A yellow color indicates available chlorine dioxide. Swirl the vial to mix. The next step is to add two drops of starch indicator solution 0.5%. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The sample should turn a blue-black color. The next step is to perform the titration using sodium thiosulfate solution. Each bottle of titrant is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. Count the number of drops during this step. The titration is complete when the sample turns from blue-black to colorless. Multiply the number of drops by your chosen equivalency factor to determine the parts per million chlorine dioxide. 